Hey guys, what's going on? Red here, and today we are doing the Ads of the Season 2 After Show Tour Thingy Mama Behind the Scenes, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I'm going to go through the map and talk about all the redstone and how it all works together because this map uses a lot of more advanced stuff, uh, a whole lot more advanced stuff than the first map did. The first map was very simple in terms of redstone, uh, looking back on it, and so a lot of people have been asking to know, uh, wanting to know how uh, the map works, how like I did the spaceship, how the cutscenes work, how do the conversation systems work. Um, so I'm gonna go through all of that, and this is actually gonna be uh, I'm gonna structure this a little bit differently than I did the first um, behind the scenes tour thing for the first map. Uh, so this map. Or this time around, I'm gonna be doing breaking the video up into a ser into a series of videos. Um, so basically, the first video will be uh, about episode one. That's gonna be this one. Uh, the next video will be about episode two, then episode three, then episode four, uh, and then behind the s uh, whatever else there is, like the end credit cutscene, the intro credits, um, all of that stuff. I'll go over in a fifth video, and then for a sixth video, I'll talk about the resource pack. Um, and how I managed to get the uh, custom sounds to work because I had so much trouble getting the voice acting to work. You have no idea. It took several months for me to figure it out because I couldn't find a tutorial on it that actually seemed to work. Um, so I'll go over how I ended up doing it uh, so that y'all can do it whenever y'all decide to create a map if you're interested in that. So let us begin. I'm gonna switch back into this view. Um, so we're gonna go fly over into episode one, which for the majority of it is right over here. Uh, so yeah, okay. So basically, for season two, when I started making it, right off the bat, I was like, I want to do it differently than season one. I don't want the constant hordes of mobs. I wanted a more story structure to it. So that's what gave birth to the uh, the conversation systems. Like here's Benny's. Benny's is such a mess because I made it and I <laughs> I was just trying to get it to work and then I had to build it. I ran out of room because yeah, I didn't plan. Um, and I had to, like when I first made this conversation, Benny, eh, the conversation was so stupid but um, I ended up changing that a couple weeks before release when I went back through the map and to see how, uh, right before we decided to do voice acting. And I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. Uh, that was pretty much all of the dialogue in season one, uh, this first episode. Uh, so this first episode is when uh, you're on the Temerity before it uh, is attacked and right before the show begins. So right here was Benny's conversation system and I'm not going to go over his because it's such a mess. Um, but I think the, ca uh, the training officers uh, is a lot more clean. Yeah, so this is a lot more clean and I'll be able to show you exactly how it works. Um, so basically, how this works. So, it starts off, we're just gonna punch out all of this so we can see what's going on. Alright, so basically when I press this button to start the conversation, uh, it will activate all this redstone, which some, these basically... Uh, let's see, what do they do? They clone these two com command blocks right here. And f at the end of each like little conversation tree, like whenever, so if I press this button, it's gonna go and you're gonna see two command Hold blocks up appear. Where do you think you're going? This is a restricted area for civilians. I want to see some ID. So now there's some command blocks here and basically these are your choices. So if you hit the red one, it'll activate this command block which sets a redstone block right here which activates the red um, conversation but if you hit the green one which is this one it activates this conversation right here um, and it does the same when once it reaches this or no not right there uh, at one of these points it clones or oh no wait, the green conversation here doesn't do anything it ends the conversation but if you hit the red one it will clone these two command blocks right up here uh, which have the next um, decision, like where you make the choice. Uh, I think you get what I'm saying, hopefully. Hopefully I'm not rambling on you, you don't know what I'm saying. Uh, so that's basically just how it works, and 
um, for like some of the bigger conversations, like the end one where you talk the red, um, myself, my bad guy version of myself, um, like that's a lot more complicated, and I'll show you that in episode four. Um, it's like a on a much larger scale. But so like since I ran through that, if I click the red one, did you get a haircut, soldier? You know union regulations require a two pixel trim around the ears. I'll have to dock you points for that. Now, what color uniform are you supposed to be wearing today, soldier? So as you can see, it got rid of those two command blocks and it placed two new ones. And that's what activates down here depending on which one you select. Um, originally when you press the green one, it activated a different thing, but right before release I changed that. Um, so they basically, so when you click green or red, uh, it comes up with the same thing of what's said. So basically, if I kill it, select red, she's gonna no. yell at me. You're supposed to wear blue on Space Day Sunday, you buffoon! Well, anyways, it's about time you showed up, Benny. Just go down the stairs and enter the simulation room to begin the test. Now move it! We'll talk about your blatant dress code violations at a later date. So basically, after that whole conversation, it opens uh, like, once it's done, it opens that door down there. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, it opens that up so that you can continue the map. And basically, that's how all the conversations work. As soon as they're all done, they activate something so that you can move forward, progress, um, and reach the end of the map eventually. So that's a very quick and dirty version of how, of how this works. Um, as you can see, like, most of these command blocks don't all they do is say text. Uh, that's like a basic command for how you say text. Um, and like color and all that, uh, if you look right there. Um, so yeah, and that's what most of these are. Uh, as you can see, like these redstone repeaters, some are a little bit speedier than the others. Uh, this was, when I was making the map, I re voice recording, voice acting was the very last thing I added in. Um, so when it came time to voice act, like, this command right here activates the voice file uh, for this part of the conversation. And basically I had to balance out or sync when the text appeared and when uh, the voice acting got to that point. Um, so yeah. So initially before you add in voice acting when you're creating a map, make sure you have an, a couple extra repeaters or space to like help sync it. Like having more time between the text is better than having less time because if it's if you have less time between what is being said if I'm saying this right then you ended up with a mess like this trying to space it out <laughs> and get synced up pro properly <clears throat> so yeah so let's move on from the conversations to uh, this is the training exercise redstone so in here basically if you press that it activates uh, all this mess. And this is basically a newer version of how Season 1's progression system was. Uh, this is the only area in the map that actually has the same sort of progression. Um, right here is the where it summons all the mobs, the different types of mobs. Basically every... there's a lot of use of scoreboard in here. Like there's a scoreboard for uh, time timer monster, which is basically how long it takes uh, these two, like every five, I'm gonna struggle to say all this. Uh, basically it uses a scoreboard timer to activate this periodically. Uh, once it reaches five and it just goes around this and each time it goes around it, hit, it goes up by one. Um, and it doesn't activate until the block of iron is moving around in there. Um, there's also a timer over here. This is timer training. This is for the voice acting that happens. So whenever time timer training is at five it'll activate this one um like what do you think you're doing soldier don't cower in the corner fight back like you mean it and then 10 15 20 25 and then 30 it's over basically it cuts down on the amount of like redstone timers if you've seen the first map you know what i mean the redstone timers were a big section of just redstone repeaters going back and forth, back and forth. Um, so yeah, that, that was crazy. Um, so that's how that system worked for the most part. Um, so what was my next thing? 
Okay, so part of in this area, when you're doing the training simulation, um, you have gravity, like uh, you have low gravity, um, and some people have asked how you get rid of it, uh, and slash keep on reapplying it, um, so that when the player is here, and, and during the simulation, they're always able to jump higher. Uh, uh, so yeah, and then how do you get rid of it once the simulation is over? So basically, that redstone is way over here. Uh, okay, so right here. So this is just a basic uh, clock thing. So basically, uh, this block right here sets the block above it to air, and this sets it to a redstone block. So it keeps on, if I select this, it will keep on reactivating and I can't punch it out. Uh, as you can see, it will stay there. And basically, it activates uh, all of this with 20 seconds, I mean not 20 seconds, 20 times per second. Um, and the command block right here is what it's actually activating over and over. So basically this is adding, uh, giving everyone the effect of jump boost uh, with a amplifier 3 for 5 seconds. And basically this repeats so often, if I press Q you can see it's staying at the same number pretty much. Um, and that's how that works. And to stop it, I basically just clear this block. I set that block to air and it stops. So that's all that does. So that's how you can do that. Um, and then also in this area, um, going in towards the boss battle, uh, it's a bunch of... Uh, like you need oxygen. So over here is my oxygen setup that is used for the entire map. Okay, there we go. Alright, I got it working. It, for some reason, it was a little bug. Um, so basically, what I was saying was, uh, this is the oxygen setup, and every time this goes around, it goes down by one. I'm going to show you what all of these do. So basically, this one right here subtracts one from the scoreboard objective of oxygen for each player. Uh, here is the command. You'll see it right there. Um, and then this one, what does this one do? Uh, that one just sets the display to sidebar. Um, Okay, so these right here, what do these ones do? Uh, this is testing. Okay, so this is testing for whenever a person's uh, score of oxygen reaches zero, uh, it will kill them, pretty much. Uh, that's what it tests for. Um, and then if they do reach zero and die, then it resets their score to 101. Um, and by the time they get back in, it's at 100 usually. That's why it's at 101. Um, so then this one, uh, test, uh, this is for the oxygen station. So oxygen stations are standing on a diamond block, as you can hear by the little fizzy noise. And every time it here, it tests for, wait, it, yeah, it's testing for a diamond block one block beneath the player. So whenever that happens, it activates this and it plays a random fizz sound. Uh, oh, and then this one also resets the score to 101. Right there, as you can see. So that's what that does. And then these two, what do these two do? Uh, this one tests for when your score of oxygen is at 25% and it plays a sound uh, saying um, oxygen levels critical or something along those lines. Um, and then that one does nothing. That was some extra thing I was working on. Uh, and that's how the oxygen system works. <laughs> if you understand any of that, uh, I feel like I explained that really, really bad. Um, so yeah. Oh, I may as well explain this right here. Uh, so basically, right in the middle of this is the world spawn. So when a player spawns in for the first time on the map, they will spawn within this little chunk right here. And basically, they'll touch these um, trip wires, which activate this redstone, which teleports them into the main lobby. So, if you're struggling to get a player to spawn in the correct spot, that is one way of doing it. Um, and that's the way I personally use in all of my maps. Um, and if you're wondering about how I was able to like get the doors to open and close whenever I wanted to, wanted them to, I would basically. Uh, use the slash fill command, fill it with air to get rid of the door, 
and then use the clone command to clone this door shape back into there. And I had different door orientations depending on the doors that I wanted to use. So, yeah. Uh, and I guess the next thing is um, the boss battle. The boss battle. That one's fun. So the boss battle, since it's up high and in space, I had to move it way out here. Um, and this is actually not the first time I've used this type of boss. I used it before in uh, my Elf Trouble map. Well, actually, I built this boss before Elf Trouble. Um, and this, <laughs> it's a little laggy, um, but I wanted to do something that is not in any other map. Uh, so I added in a spaceship boss, and it's very, very simple how it works. So basically, uh, which one is it? I think it is this one right here. Uh, yes. Okay, so, oh wait, I need to activate this real quick. Um, okay, I got one. There we go. Okay, so now it should be cloning the spaceship. Uh, so it's moving around right now, right? Okay, so we go into uh, game mode, spectator, and you'll see how this works. So up here is a guardian, one of those little evil fishies. And basically, uh, there's a command block system which I just activated that tests for where the art guardian is, and it clones the shit model which is down there as well. Come on. Last score critical. Oh, my oxygen's low. Uh, slash scoreboard objective uh, remove oxygen. Okay. Um, and basically, this is the ship model that is constantly cloned by these two commands. Um, and basically, it just clones it back and forth and clears the same section out with air. Um, one thing, though, is that there's redstone inside of this, which tests for whenever you hit it. Um, and because of how it, stuff breaks, it uh, constantly falls. Um, so that's why you see like redstone and repeaters like popping off all over the place. When you're playing, you can't actually see it. Um, so yeah. And basically, you just fight this. You hit it five times, and then it explodes. That's what uh, this command sets for, uh, tests for. Okay, let's get out of creative mode. Game mode, uh, I mean, spectator. Okay, so this is just testing for when it reaches five hits. Uh, there's a score, uh, one of the command blocks inside the ship tests for, uh, adds one to uh, scoreboard, boss one hits is what it's called. Um, and basically, it's this is just playing sounds, uh, testing for, stuff. That's pretty much all it does. Uh, whenever the ship decides to attack, it shoots a bunch of arrows at you. Uh, as you can see there, that's what all of that commands are. Uh, and that's basically how this all works. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in episode one I really need to cover. Um, the only other thing might be uh, how to do all the custom mobs. and. That is, I basically use a website, um, it, and I'll link that in the description, and basically it's very self-explanatory, and it lets you create any mob you want, and it gives you the command. It's very, very simple. I'll link that in the description, as I said, and so yeah, I think that's the end of this section of the Redstone Tour of Exodus Season 2. Um, I will be doing Exodus, I'll be doing the next episode, episode 2, and I'll cover the, um, the boss that is in there, the children of Venera, which are very, very scary, as I've heard from people, um, and also how I did some of the cutscenes there. So, I shall see y'all in the next video.